Riding among the throng in the talented 250 class, rookie Dean Wilson emerged as yet another young hopeful with his standout performance in Texas. With Francis Christophe Porcel sitting at the top of the standings, Wilson now finds himself in the hunt for the title, along with another rookie, the blazing fast Eli Tomac, and Trey Kennard, who's seeking redemption of his own, returning to the scene of his 2009 season-ending injury. Kennard oh, oh. just threw it away! Today, the chase for glory continues, with Porcel in the lead, holding back a host of challengers. It all happens next, here in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, at the Rockstar Energy Drink High Point National. Welcome to Mount Morris, Pennsylvania for round three of the Lucas Oil AMA Promoto Cross Championship in the 250 class. Hello everyone, Jason Wygant joined by three-time AMA Motocross champion Jeff Emig. It's the Rockstar Energy Drink National here at High Point Raceway in Pennsylvania. And this is what we like about the 250 class. You get a couple established stars and you get a bunch of young kids trying to knock them off. Should be pretty exciting. It definitely is. And the former world champions, Porcel and Rattray, have been strong. They've been fast. They've shown a lot of heart. It's also been the rookies that have come out blistering pace. Wilson, uh, Tomac have been so fast, but they haven't quite been able to finish off the motos like they'd like. I think the story here at High Point is going to be the guys in the middle there. Kennard, Tickle, Weimer, uh, Barsha. This is their chance to step up, see if they've worked out those bugs, and take those guys off of the top part of the podium. here for the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. It appeared that Wilson was going to win last week, but then he gave it away in the last lap. Yeah, last weekend wasn't very good. Uh, you know, just a rookie mistake, obviously. Uh, the whole race, I thought I had a big lead, and obviously it wasn't as big as I thought. Tyler Rattray has caught Dean Wilson. Is Wilson tired? Is he cruising? Does he know he's there? Uh, he he does now. now. <laughs> Better get on the gas. With half a lap to go, I saw Dean was like a second in front of me. So I came up to Dean pretty quick and I knew Dean was leading. So I don't know if he took it really easy on the last couple laps thinking that he had a really big lead. And then uh, when he looked over his shoulder, when he saw me, I thought he was going to gas it up and go like crazy until the end. But he pulled over a bit and let me pass. For some reason in my head, it could have been the heat. I don't know. I thought he was a lap down. And so I was just trying to be a good teammate and let Tyler go by. but. Obviously, that was being too good of a teammate. I think Dean was maybe a little bit confused. Maybe he thought I was a lap down or something. But I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's racing, and the first one to the checkered flag wins, and I managed to get the win. Careful that you don't give this whole darn thing away. Tyler Rattray wins the moto, yeah. And Tickle, he's going to fight for every position, and he gets past Wilson. I don't think there was really anything to say. I mean, it felt bad for him, you know? Like, he didn't do it on purpose. And I think it was just a... Uh, a mistake and I'm sure it won't happen again and I was actually I told him I was proud of him I thought he rode a really good moto that was well, weird. I don't understand what I, I think he just threw it away I don't understand what has happened to Dean Wilson down the stretch yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll never make that mistake again all right Dean Wilson going to try to win today and make up for that uh, error last time let's give us our Rocky Mountain Keys of the race, Jeff, for Dean Wilson. Yeah, well, he uh, he definitely needs to do what he did last week was get the whole shot, get a good start. The whole shot would be best. On the track here today for the second moto, he needs to flow through those long ruts and those turns. He is awesome at that. He gets those big, long legs out there, gets the weight in front of the bike, and then rest tonight. <laughs> that means go all the way to the finish line. Everything you got, just throw it out there. And so let's take a look at uh, Moto 1. These are the finishes. Yeah, we already put this one in the books earlier today. And Justin Barsha, who had been struggling just a bit early in the season, takes the Moto win. Ratchet was second. And uh, Christophe Porcel, points leader, ends up a disappointing fourth. So it's all sorts of shaking up here. And that's pretty much what we say every week so far this season. I'm telling you, this is an exciting second Moto here. There's these young guys are hungry. The, the rookies, the veterans, Weimer, he's right in the middle. OK, it, this is it. Time to step up. Beginning of the summer series here. Well, we basically, like you said at the top of the show, have three classes. We have veterans, we have rookies, and we have the in-between group like Barsha, the sophomore, who won the first moto today. Let's go racing. They're banging bars, but it's 
past the 377 of Porcel. Getting off to the early lead. Now we had the whole shot at Moto 1 and threw it away. This time he's got Trey Kennard on the red right behind him on 38. And, and then the the target squeezed out. And the Woo! 108, the 108 of uh, Wilson is now, he was fourth, now he's second. Wow. And I was watching Porcel double the tunnel jump. Hopefully he does that next time around, we'll point it out. But he's in the lead, and what a job by Wilson, like you said, Jeff, to move to second. Martin Davalos on the 577 is third, and Trey Kennard going to try to make a pass. Oh, come oh, on! Kennard! No, he goes down. I thought he was going to hold on to it. And high point leading to Kennard's undoing again. Almost the same section. Fortunately, he's up this time. And the real question also, along with that, is where is his teammate, Justin Barsha, the winner of Moto 1? And Kennard, by the way, was 14th in the first moto after he crashed in the first lap. So he's had a long day today. And look, just at the top here on the... It is just chaos back there. Yeah, I'm telling unbelievable. you, look how it is just bar-to-bar -bar action all the way through the pack. And with these ruts like they are, it's so difficult to ride in, the, in that big group like that. Yeah, that's the difference between getting the good start and staying there like Kennard could have done, or now have to work. Oh. Look at this, riders down everywhere. You're just losing more and more time as you have to deal with that. Looks like Davalos on the Star Racing Yamaha is taking second back away from the 108 of Wilson. Davalos out of Ecuador has had an up and down season, although no offense, but more down than up. This could be his chance to finally get up on the podium for the first time this season. He's got Wilson, and there's no doubt the 108 is going to charge hard. Oh, there he goes. goes the line. Oh, man, more chaos. There's Jake Weimer on the number 12 way back in the pack. Seeley down there, the 200 on the Troy Lee Honda. Wow. I'll tell you what, though, here we go back to second and third. It's a drag race up to the finish line, and it's Wilson moving back into second place. Wow, and he overjumped oh. that tabletop that they purposely extended this year so you couldn't overjump it, and he still did. I'll tell you what, he's going to have to. He's going to have to get on the gas, too, because with Porcel out front, Porcel's got something to prove. That uh, fourth place in the first moto, he's not going to be happy with that. And more so, he didn't look so good at the end of the moto, Porcel. Yes, I'm yes. saying. Yep. But in the moto, he did not look strong. He did not look confident. So right now, he's got a uh, couple of two or three teammates back there. We're looking for Barsha. There he is on the 17. He is ninth right now. He won the first moto today, so he's got some work to do. We've got Phil Micheletti on the KTM behind him in 10th. And in front, another KTM, Tommy Searle, on the 19th. But the rider who was second in the first moto, Raftray, is fourth. Could be Raftray's day to win it overall. And that's so exciting about this 250 class. It's up and down. These kids will have one good race and then one bad. And makes it difficult as far as math goes, but it's definitely fun to watch. Well, it certainly is. And uh, just in front of Barsha here is Will Hahn. 49, he was 12th in moto number one. Right now running in seventh. And what I also want to point out to folks is uh, it was raining. It was pretty much a mud race, the first moto. I can't believe this track has come around like this. We watched Blake Wharton in the 21 battling with Nico Izzy for fifth, a little bit further up. You got Rattray in fourth, Davalos in third, Wilson in second. 28 is Rattray. Veteran out of South Africa going after Davalos. And Davalos not letting the 108 of Wilson get away. Man, what a oh, battle Nice here. job by Rattray. That is one of the fastest sections in this entire series. Downhill then back up, and Davalos holds it wide open and takes the spot back away from Rattray. Wow, what a battle here. These guys are going for it. Look at Rattray trying to move to the inside. No. He's high on the berm. Let's see if he follows him. No, he cuts out the inside. Man, Rattray's just tough. He can go in any line he wants, and he'll figure out a way to keep the bike underneath him. Davalos is a fighter. He's got the inside. Davalos Ooh. went to block the inside line. He wasn't going to let Rattray come up the front <laughs> or come up the inside on that left-hander. And Rattray, Rattray just, go? Yeah, Rattray just <laughs> stayed on the gas all the way around the outside. Made it look easy. He must have gone twice as far as Cavalos. I can't believe he made that pass. Yeah, now we're getting a good idea right now of what our, of what uh, sort of lap times these guys are uh, running here in the second moto. Purcell at a 2.21.8. Wilson was a 2.22 flat. Then, be, then uh, behind that, Rattray was a 2.21.7. So he's actually the fastest rider on the track that last lap. He proved it there by uh, moving past Davalos.
So the Green Bikes are one, two, three again. Just like they were last week in Texas. Parcell leading Wilson and Rattray. Davalos fourth. Blake Wharton up to fifth. He's guiding around Nico Izzyu sixth. It's Tommy Searle, Will Hahn, Justin Barsha. Our first moto winner is back in ninth. The speed differential in this class is so small from one rider to the next. Barsha in ninth. It's going to take everything he has to try to challenge these guys and salvage the overall. Just like everything they had on these uh, Pro Circuit <laughs> Kawasaki's to make that right-handed fall away double. That thing was huge. They couldn't even jump it in the rain, and now they got to go out and figure it out. And the jump face is pretty rutted also, but definitely the faster line. Oh, it's so rutted down in that valley. And, and it gets uh, choppy. Yeah. It gets like choppy ruts. I don't mean choppy like up and down bumps, but choppy from left to right. So you're in the berm, and it wants to kick you out. Well, right now, Wilson trying to keep his teammate Porcel in check while dealing with the pressure of the 28 of Rattray. Great racing here in the scenic mountain home of West Virginia University, Morgantown, West Virginia. Stay tuned. Christoph Porcel continues to lead the way here at the Rockstar Energy Drink National High Point Raceway, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania. Porcel this year has been strong in the first motos and has had trouble in the second. Today the opposite. Tough time, fourth in Moto 1. He's on the gas now, though. Fastest lap here in Moto2 is pulling away. Watch oh, wow. this. He's doubling over the tunnel jump. And then watch how he sweeps and carries all his, all of his momentum around the outside. But I'll tell you what, Dean Wilson yeah. and Tyler Rattray, both the teammates, they are not far behind. And Porcel is executing this race perfectly at, at this moment. But I'm telling you, he's going to have company all the way to the finish. Yeah, they are not intimidated. Uh, Porcel had such credentials, nearly won this championship last year, but uh, they're not going to give him any momentum. He's going to have to earn it. Uh, Aaron Bates, what do you got on the 108? Dean Wilson. Well, guys, when I spoke with Dean Wilson earlier this afternoon, he said the toughest part about coming here to High Point is learning the track. Oh, you got to remember. Oh, Sorry about like that, Aaron. He just went happened. down. Yeah, he just went down in a triple. Aaron couldn't see that. It was far away from the pit area. Wilson cased the jump and went down, Jeff. Well, learning the track, that's what she was just talking about, is this is a section that has actually changed all throughout the day, and he cross read it and made a, a big mistake here, and that's going to cost him in the overall. But let's take a look at this replay. Watch when he comes here. So he's going to double over, over this, and then he wants to triple off of this tabletop. The single now, watch this. He cross ruts, gets all of his weight to the right, comes up about two feet short. Luckily, when he, uh, he kind of, the side of that uh, dirt hill there kind of saved him a little bit. It looked like he augered in, but could have been a little worse. You see him back up and going. Doesn't look like the bike is too bent up either. Let's see if Wilson can charge all the way to the finish. Well, I think that was Aaron Jinkston, as soon as she was talking about her fellow Canadian. Things went awry. Uh, when they go past the finish line, the next time we'll tell you exactly how much time Wilson lost when they go past the strike and how many positions. The big benefactor of that is going to be Rattray. Second in the first moto, and second here, he could be looking at his first ever overall win in the United States, and I think it's a bit of a surprise if it actually has taken Rattray over a year of racing in the U.S. to finally get one. Guy won the uh, MX2 championship in Europe. That's basically the equivalent of this 250 class. Won that title in 2008. Whoa, Porcel almost goes down. Well, and that's what happens when you become a champion is, uh, you know, you prove it to yourself and everybody else that you can do it, and then they go out and expect you to do it again. Yeah. It's the nature <laughs> of the business, right? <laughs> so uh, there's Rattray. Talk about his riding style. A lot of people, uh, you know, talk about, first of all, he's not even raced Supercross in the United States. He's been injured both years. But they really get strong late in the race. He certainly does, and everybody, uh, they, they like to call him a big guy. I don't think he's that big. He's right. just... He's just really fit and he's really strong, you know, and the lower body strength is there. And he rides in a way that he looks like he's attacking all the time, which is, uh, I, I look at him and I think that there's quite a bit difference between Porcel and Rattray, how they ride the motorcycle. Porcel's really bent over, hunched over. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Rattray, Rattray is. is but Porcel's a little more upright, okay? Hey, there's a variety of ways to go fast here in this 250 class. Different riding styles, different teams, bikes. But it pretty much all adds up to about the same amount of speed on the track. The competition is really deep in this 250 division. When I first turned pro, it was kind of like, oh, top three, top five guys were really gnarly. You know, like, to be up there, you're doing good. Now it's like, to even be in the top ten for a couple races or to be, even be up there every weekend, you're really 
doing something right, you're, you really are somebody on a dirt bike. You're going to be in front, and you're going to get someone behind you, and you're going to be like, hey, man, who's that kid? You know, a lot of really, really good guys, and, you know, we got some of the new kids, you know, they're pretty ruthless. The rookies are kind of... They're going to they're gonna bring a statement and they're going to come in swinging, but you never know, you know. The veteran guys might prevail a little bit because they've been there and, you know, maybe a little bit smarter. You can probably only pick three guys that are going to be up there for the championship and it's going to be probably ten guys that can win national. If you look at the names of the people you've got, you've got people all over the world and they're the best at what they do. But you got to line up from the gate and go no matter what, pull the trigger. Well, Jeff, the perfect proof of how tough the competition is this year is each moto has been a different story in this, the sixth moto of the season. And every week, another guy seems to establish himself as, I'm the fastest guy. And then the next week, it changes again. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, Purcell has been the most consistent and consistently the fastest, which was kind of the M.O. last year, too. Um, he's... Uh, He's been the benefactor, especially at the Freestone round just a week ago, that oh, yeah. uh, that he won the overall with a 1-5. Maybe in, that's happened, it, you know, it has happened before, but typically it's when somebody wins the final moto. Yes. You don't get a fifth in the last moto and end up winning the overall, yeah. typically. So my statement, the point of my statement is, is, is just, it is, uh, there's so much competition out there, and each and every week you gotta you gotta battle for it each and every moment. Yeah, don't re don't forget our star early season, the rookie Eli Tomac, just battling to get a top 10 to the first moto today, and he is 13th right now. Dean Wilson, who was so strong last week, had a crash, he is in seventh. Now Christophe Porcel and Tyler Rattray battling for the win today. You see the cable cars of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Great place to hang out, stay tuned. Seth. Justin Barsha won the first moto today here at High Point. We thought he could win the overall. Uh -uh, he is in a battle right now for 15th place with Les Smith at the number 87. Hard to speculate if, if something has happened uh, to the bike, but it just looks like he is not hitting his lines and just uh, mentally not doing it. Making mistakes is another mistake. Yeah, well, he had it going on at least in the first moto. We'll give you the highlights of moto number one here, the 250 class at High Point. And what a moto it was oh, yeah. for Justin Barsha, I'm telling you. And off the start, it was competitive all the way through. Kawasaki guys got the horsepower down into turn one. You can see Rattray and Porcel duking it out. Porcel is going to grab the whole shot. We thought the Frenchman would take off. Uh-uh. We make a couple of mistakes. There's some huge wrecks here. Take a look. This oh. is Max Anstey oh. going off the finish line and hitting uh, the fence there. Took him a while to get off the bike also. Trey Kennard goes down with Les Smith early on. This was on the beginning of lap two. So that set Kennard way back. He would end up 14th. Yeah, those guys had their bikes mixed up. Yeah, that's not a fight. That's, hey, let's figure out who's trying to be stolen bikes out here. Then Porcel, the leader, goes down. And that opens the door for Barsha and Rattray to get through. Justin Barsha, like you said, really strong in this moto, Jeff. Uh, he was flying, and he just uh, picked up some form that he had from last year. He just dominated this moto. And in the back, as the rain got worse, it got slippery. Guys started making mistakes. And here's Wharton clipping the back of Wilson and going down. But Wharton was on the gas. He did not give up all moto long. Yeah, he fought back and stayed inside the top 10. Then Blake Baggett putting in the fastest laps of the race on the Rockstar Suzuki, makes a move on Porcel to put himself in third. Not too bad, but he passed the uh, series points leader for the rookie. He takes third, Rattray second, and the win goes to Barsha. So we're thinking Barsha has figured it out after a tough couple of motos to begin this season. Now he's back. Now he's on fire. Now he means business. And now in the second moto, he is running 15. Yeah, and he started inside of the top 10. It looked like uh, he was going to be able to work his way forward. Aaron Bates is down on the track. You got the info on Barsha for us? Well, I'm taking a look right now at Michael Tomlin, otherwise known as Nike, and that's Justin Barsha's mechanic, and he wrote big, bold letters on the pit board points, trying to remind the rookie that this is all about points. We're only three rounds in. We've still got a long season ahead of us. Not to give up hope. Currently sitting 15th, not exactly where he wants to be right now. Yeah, at six championship points at least, sitting in uh, 15th, and if you're Barsha, that's not so good, but considering how quickly he bounced back in Moto1 today, if he does it again at our next race at Bud's Creek, Maryland, maybe he'll put himself back in the hunt. Yeah, the problem is, though, is you look at your leader, oh, he's 377, yeah. he's at uh, 221. Barsha just ran a 231 
last lap around. That's 10 seconds difference. And uh, I'm not sure what that is. It, it doesn't look like that there's a problem with the bike or anything like that, but let's see if we can get a word from him after this. Brad Tran, the 28, is only two and a half seconds behind Porcel, so it's still close the lead. Then Davalos comes by with Wharton in fourth. Waiting on Nico Izzy. I see Izzy back in the top five. A brief flash of brilliance in uh, Texas. Couldn't hold on. But today, looks like he's going to keep it to the end. <laughs> Sixth is uh, Wilson after a fall. And Hahn and Tickle. Man, Brock Tickle, you never see him up front early on. But late in the race, kid just keeps on chugging. He certainly is right now. He takes a little look over his shoulder. Sees Trey Kennard. It, I mean, once again, last week in the second moto, Tickle rode up second. Right now, uh, you know, he's at eighth, working on seventh. I mean, just so much competition. Yeah, he's battling the same yeah. guy that he battled for second, Wilson. They just have five more riders in front of them now. Ah, it's down to one line there in that corner. Oh, Wilson. And what is that like? Is that like the balance beam to try to keep the bike straight in those ruts and then jump? Well, it certainly is because it's got what we call hooks in it, where the rut gets in there and then it hooks hooks too far to the way that you want to go, and then it kicks the back end up and gets kind of unsettles everything. And that's the real talent is to be able to balance the bike, maneuver it through that. But uh, right now, I mean, Wilson, 222. It's pretty good lap times. Porcel just turned to 22. Rattray, Rattray at 22. All right, Dean Wilson trying to rebuild his finish here after a crash. Costable should have been a podium finish. Let's see how many more positions he can make up. Well, his teammates, Christophe Porcel and Tyler Rattray, try to get away. Fans there at High Point being treated to some unpredictable action. Stay tuned. Oh, Next Saturday, the Rolex Sports Car Series slams into mid-Ohio, where the GT points battle is as close as it gets. Don't miss the Rolex Sports Car Series live from Mid-Ohio next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. Christoph Porcel in the lead, but he's got company. Tyler Rattray, as always, strong late in the moto. He's going after it, Jeff. He certainly is. That's the, not at all what uh, Porcel needs right now. He needs to just go ride a nice, comfortable race and take the win, but that ain't gonna happen. Rattray is charging. He knows how to get it all the way to the finish, and he knows that uh, this is a long series, and he doesn't only want to win the race or the overall, which he's uh, in position to do right now, but he wants to be the champion at the end of the series. You got to get the maximum amount of points each and every week, and he's digging deep right now. These guys are hooking it. Still 222s, only Wharton, who wow. is now up to third, is turning a 221. Everyone else is off the pace from that. It's Blake Wart makes the move on Martin Davalos for third, but we're going to stay focused on this battle for the lead. Tyler Rattray outside of the top ten at the opener at Hangtown. We both had the chance to talk to him this morning, and he said, you know, I didn't race Supercross due to an injury, and maybe took a race to just get under my belt. He hadn't raced since the motocross of nations back in September. Oh, yeah, of last year. Yeah. So, yeah, it takes a while just to kind of shake the cobwebs out or whatever, but he certainly is now doing what he was expected to do yes. when he came over a year ago. And these two used to battle in Europe. Rattray, uh, I think they considered him the odds-on favorite to win the MX2 championship in Europe a couple of years ago. And then Porcel basically came out of nowhere and upset everyone and uh, took the title that uh, Rattray thought was going to be his. A few years later, Rattray won it, and then they both moved to the U.S. Yeah, and even though both riders have a different riding style, uh-oh, this is going to be a little short. Whoa. Oh, maybe a lot short. <laughs> uh, but they both have an, an interesting way of looking at the track, and I, if you would really focus on where they're planning the rear tire and the lines that they're choosing, like right here, just finding a nice, smooth outside line, and look how much momentum he carries over that without using a lot of energy to try the deeper ruts that are on the inside that are all hooked and you don't know, have all of the holes in it. But they both have really good minds of how they're processing the information of the track. That uh, double has been really tough. In the first photo, it was muddy. They couldn't even jump it. Then part right through this one, they decided to bust it out. And uh, well, take us through this uh, yeah. jump here, man. This is hard. Watch this. This is that huge double. Now, he slides out a little bit beforehand, but he was committed and stays in there. Watch how short he comes up. Oh. Right on top. Now, what That's is a causing? huge jump. Okay, that yeah, okay. thing is it's massive. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough jump right now.
for uh, first reason is because it's a little bit rutted on, okay. on, you know, on the takeoff from all of the rain that we've had. Second thing is what I noticed there on that replay is that the rear tire slipped out on him just a little bit. So he okay. didn't quite, either he didn't get the line that he wanted and he didn't get the drive that he wanted. So he combined all that and uh, it comes up a little bit short. But right now, as we've taken a look back to third, Blake Morton on the gas. And uh, we saw him this morning and I said, man, you got to get a rabbit's foot, a four leaf clover. Anything that could have gone wrong for Blake Morton this year has pretty much gone wrong. Yeah. Finally showing the speed that he has. Yeah, I mean, he is, he is totally on the gas right now. Once again, that lap around uh, 223 flat. That's faster half than the leaders. A, half a second faster than Porcel. We see Rattray make the mistake. That was 1.2 seconds faster than Rattray. And right now he's only 8.7 seconds behind Rattray. So, hey, if he keeps on this pace, he may get up there to the leader. Hey, look at the 38, Trey Kennard. Are you kidding me? We saw this guy down on the first lap, and he is not giving up. He's gotten around Brock Tickle, who is usually rock solid late in the race. And now he's going after Wilson. Canard flying right now, a 2.21 lap time, by far the fastest of anyone that last time around. Yeah, it certainly was. It, it, it was Wharton at a 2.23, Canard at 2.21, two, almost two seconds a lap faster. So Canard has really found some lines and he is laying it down here in High Point. Look at how he just scrubbed that and he's around the outside. Look at how much momentum he's carrying right now. Wow. Kennard, who had so much bad luck out here last year. He was leading the second moto. We thought he was headed to his first career victory in the AMA Pro Motocross Championship. And then a huge crash not only ended his day, but ended his season. Let's talk to Trey Kennard about returning to the place where he threw it all the way last year. You know, last year in, in 09, leading uh, the whole race, the, the second moto with uh, Purcell behind me, it was. You know, besides breaking my wrist and uh, kind of going down in a blaze of glory, it was uh, it was good because I mean I thought you know Purcell was behind me the whole time, so it was kind of you know it was there was no questions. You know, it was like you were leading, and you know the, the guy that was runner up in the championship was right behind you, and, and then Dungey was actually third. So um, that was good for me, and, I, and that was where I think I kind of just. You know, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do my best, and I really wanted to win that race, and it was unfortunate it didn't go my way, but, um, you know, sometimes good things come out of bad things, and, you know, I'll be ready for this year. Kennard has had a rough go of it uh, outdoors, broke his leg in 2008, broke his wrist last year. Kid doesn't give up, though. And he's gotten around Wilson. So Trey Kennard down on the first lap, up to sixth, Unbelievable the ride he's put in right now. Fans having a great time out here at High Point, and with charges like Trey Kennard in the battle for the lead to watch, there's plenty to watch off the track as well as on. Stay tuned. Star Energy Drink National. And here's the guy who's going to try to win this moto and maybe the overall Christophe Porcel out of France on the 377. But behind him, his teammate Tyler Rattray, the South African. If we do the math, with two second place finishes today, we believe we'll actually end up the overall winner. Well, so Porcel, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, look at these laps here. Porcel just poured it on 220.9, and Rattray a 222 flat. So it's about a second that Porcel just, uh, he's letting it rip now. He's maybe conserved a little energy there, rode pretty easy during the middle of the race, right? Rode efficiently, and look at the gap now that he has on his teammate. But the still, uh, the still could give Rattray uh, the overall. Well, you gotta wonder, Jeff, do you think that maybe Rattray figured that out, or his mechanic maybe gave him the pit board and said you don't need to win this moto? Could that be a factor? It could be a factor, yeah. but you know, Porcel, he just, he's just fluid. The lap time says that he picked it up. That's true, Rattray, Rattray is still going solid. Yeah. 222s, 221s, the whole moto, Wharton now, uh, who sets in third is at a 223 and a half. Here's Wharton. That's the jump that claimed Kennard last year. It was a little bigger though last year. <laughs> yeah, I think Kennard's probably happy to see that down. This one's big. This would be the one that you wouldn't want to go with the bars on, I, I'll tell you. And these guys on these 250 bikes here, they 
They have to uh, square up that turn a little bit on the outside, and they got to give it everything the bike has to make it. Uh, that was Wharton on the 21 and third. A couple of riders are lapped out. There's Martin Davalos in fourth. Best ride of the uh, young season so far for Davalos. Star Racing Yamaha team. They are the factory Yamaha team in the 250 class. And wow, Trey Kennard wants fourth. It's going to be one of those deals. You look at the results at the end of the race and say, oh, top five, that's pretty good. That will not indicate how hard Kennard rode today. Yeah, look at these last lap around. 220.8. Okay, he's flying. Davalos in front of him is at a 225. That's bad news for Davalos, unless he had a bad lap and he made a mistake. Davalos is going to have to pick it up if he's going to stay in uh, fourth place here. Thought we had the uh, camera set on fast forward here. He's downhill to wake Kennard, hitting them. Make it up, like you said, five seconds a lap on the rider in front of him. Davalos, and with the way this series seems to be shaping up, the two extra points Kennard can get from passing him could make all the difference at the end of the season. Wow, no one has been able to early establish themselves as the championship favorite. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, it's, it's obvious sitting there watching Trey Kennard, his line choice, he got out of the main line. He started jumping around to different spots, using the whole track. That's why he's reeling in Davalos at a fast pace. Now, it's unfortunate for Kennard. If he had been able to stay up here after this good start, as you'll see in the progressive whole shot replay, he could be challenging for the win. It's all Kawasaki, though, once we got to the strike, Jeff. Yeah, Will Hahn was right up front, but look, right as they have to make the turn, it's actually Porcel who gets the Kawasaki turned around and takes the progressive hole shot. And Kennard was right there behind him, but then he went down a few corners later, and that's allowed uh, Porcel to get away. Then he weathered a storm from Tyler Rattray. Late in the race, though. Oh, Looks like we got some rain. Real storm that he's going to have to weather right now. It's raining again. And that happened earlier today in our oh. first moto. Porcel, Careful. he actually jumped that from the inside, faded all the way to the outside. Instead of making the right and actually turning right over that double, he almost jumped it straight. So the pressure's on now for Christophe Porcel if he wants to win this moto because Tyler Rattray is there. And Rattray has dropped down to a 221 lap time to match Porcel's 221. And the rain is coming down. That's going to affect vision and certainly traction. Wow. What a crazy day here at High Point. For the first time, Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest car collection on speed, comes to Orange County. Hundreds of restored and rare cars will be auctioned off to the highest bidders. Three days of live coverage with expert commentary. Barrett Jackson, Orange County, kicks off on June 25th exclusively on speed. Hey, that's your neck of the woods, Jeff. So to take is. some of those old win bonuses and buy something. Yeah, buy something really old that's really expensive. But yeah. they, they've got some cool stuff on like there, that, I tell right? you. I'm sure she'd appreciate that. I'm into bikes, though, motocross bikes. Oh, okay. That's my thing. Well, that's, that's why we're here in Pennsylvania today. And uh, Christophe Porcel leading by 3.6 seconds over Tyler Rattray. Time running out. One lap to go. Porcel looks over his shoulder. I think the challenge from Rattray is over. That's for the moto win, but for the overall, Rattray in second looks good. Yeah, but, when, but you're looking at the big picture for Porcel. You know, he's had a way if he has one moto that's a little bit off and he's had a way to come back, win the other moto or win one of the motos each day. Just a fantastic rebound here because at the end of the first moto, he didn't look so good. He didn't look like he was happy. He didn't look like whether he was happy with the bike or just himself or whatnot, but he has dominated this moto, just making it look easy at this point. Every week when Porcel has one good moto, one bad one, he tells us on the podium the goal next week is to win both moto. So far, hasn't quite been able to pull it off. And if Rattray holds on, we will have three different winners in the first three rounds of the tour. Eli Tomac, so spectacular early in the season, is running 17th right now. Porcel won last week. He's going to come up about one point short of the overall today. Couple, and then Rattray will take it. Yeah, and a couple other riders that uh, you remember, Tommy Searle in the first moto of the year almost beat Porcel to the stripe, ended up second. He's running 20th right now, and Barsha, our moto one winner here today, is back in 21st, which ironically is the first position that doesn't pay points. Yeah, that's all the effort and none of the rewards if you finish 21st. That's probably the most frustrating position out there. And Porcel's going to make up as many points as he possibly can. He'll get the full kit, 25, and keep that red number plate on his bike. That goes to the rider leading the series points. So you see a little bit of rain coming down here, but it's the final lap yep. for Christophe Porcel. He's not going to have to worry about it much longer. 
See him uh, pulling a little tear off right here. This is where he went down in the first turn. No problems this time, though. One section here to go. Wow. How fast, by the way, is that down? <laughs> we don't have speedometers on these bikes, so I don't know, but it, you find out how fast it is when you get falling off the bike at that pace. Hey, I've heard riders say that on occasion they feel that they're pretty much tapped out as fast as the bike can go, and you can tell on a motocross track you're rarely in that situation where you're at absolute top speed, top well, of the gearbox. So here's going to be one of those sections again, and just one turn to the finish. Once again, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki putting another rider on the top of the podium. Yeah, they just shake up the order week in and week out, but the colors are the same. Christoph Porcel is going to win the second moto out here at High Point. So congrats out to him. They allow him to hold on to the series points lead. But the big story, about a year later than we thought it would happen, but Tyler Rattray has won his first ever AMA overall. Congratulations to the veteran out of South Africa. He takes high point with a strong performance as well last week. He's a serious championship contender. Blake Wharton, third and fourth. How about that? Trey Kennard down on the first lap up to fourth to finish. Brock Tickle strong as always to the end. Fifth, Dean Wilson will cross in sixth. Tyler Ratre, you know, there's an old phrase that the guys need a year maybe to learn the tracks. Maybe that's the case. This is a lot stronger performance from Rattre in 2010 than there was last year. And his old friend from Europe, his old championship rival, how about that? Hugging it out, dude. Yeah. But we'll sort it out down there on the podium. It is another great day for Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki. Congrats out to Tyler Rattre. We'll talk to him next. AMA Pro Motocross Championship in the 250 class. Here at High Point Raceway, unpredictable weather, unpredictable racing. We'll do our best to sort it all out for you with our Lucas Oil Race Recap. It wasn't raining when the race began. Christophe Porcel going to elbow everyone out of the way and take the whole shot of the number 377. Well, and he was followed by Trey Kennard. You can see here with this great start. And uh, Wilson was up there, Rattray was in there. Kennard ended up going down oh. right here, but he was not out. No, he would somehow put on a miraculous comeback. Then we had Dean Wilson battling for second, and he goes down. Tyler Rattray able to sneak by him and take the runner-up spot. Christoph Porcel holds on to win the moto, but that second place finish for Rattray is enough to give him the overall. Blake Wharton is going to end up third in the moto, as we'll check out the results here. And Kennard, from about last to fourth, what a ride. Brock Tickle takes fifth, and Dean Wilson recovers from his crash to take sixth. Let's go down to Aaron Bates in the rain with our winner, Tyler Rattray. It is definitely pouring down here, but pouring with a victory. Tyler, you've won two motos here in America, but your very first overall, where does this moment rank? Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, uh, I've been working hard for this, and I didn't get a moto win last year. I mean. Christoph and Ryan won another level, and I mean, I didn't get any motor wins, but I came away with a 2-2, but that was good. I mean, I was the most consistent on the day, and uh, just want to thank Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Monster, Traxxas, Dunlop, my family, my mom and stepdad, my fiance, Jeff Spencer, everyone, thank you. After a long hiatus from racing, do you feel like you're just now starting to get in your rhythm again? Yeah, I was getting my rhythm in that second mode. I didn't get a good jump out of the gate and just push hard into the first turn, and uh, Dean made a little little mistake and went down, and I was behind Christoph and was just following him. I mean, he's Christoph's got a phenomenal talent, and uh, he had some good lines out there. So I was just pretty much following him and uh, finished second. So can't complain with first overall. Congratulations. Maybe we'll see you do a little South African victory dance in the rain. <laughs> hey, last year he said it, well, last week he said it was hotter in Texas than it was in any time he'd ever raced in South Africa. Unbelievable. Here's a Toyota moving forward schedule. We'll be at the Mechanicsville, Maryland for the Bucks Creek National next week. And then we'll go up high, a mile high elevation, Lakewood, Colorado. And then the Red Bud Challenge at Buchanan, Michigan. And then the Sand Whoops of Millville, Minnesota. Completely different track conditions everywhere we go on this tour, Jeff. All the way through, and it's going to be competitive. I mean, look at that. You know, we had Barsha win the one and then have a bad one, so. What a great matchup you have. The tough guy, Rattray, against the talented guy, Porcellus. has certainly been fun to watch. Stay tuned. Saturday, the Rolex Sports Car Series. Fans, they say, hey, you're doing a good job. I say, we've got the most fun job of anyone here because we're in a nice booth, and Jeff, look what the rest of our crew has to deal Man, with. Man, the camera guys are out there getting it done, guys. Great job today. 
they probably wish we had like a 55 minute show so we could get this thing done. Thanks for sticking out for us. Uh, we're going to show you our uh, Geico mode of the race in a moment as well as our overall results for the day. As mentioned, Tyler Rattray comes up with the overall victory, edges his teammate Christoph Rousseau by one point, and Blake Wharton in the overall podium. Welcome back. What a moto for him. He charged all the way up. Absolutely. Aaron Bates has Christoph Porcel on the podium. Go ahead, Aaron. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying that air-conditioned dry booth in there. <laughs> Have fun. Christoph, congratulations on an outstanding performance once again today. It's, you got the whole shot and basically just put it on autopilot. Take us through this track, though. A lot of elevation changes, off-cambered corners, deep ruts. You had to deal with everything. How technical was this track? Oh, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just really happy that I got two all shot today, and uh, the track is kind of, kind of big, and uh, there's like too many ruts, and it's kind of slippery on the top. So uh, we changed uh, the tire for the second moto, and uh, you know, it's not easy to ride on a track like that, and it's why I think I finished fourth first moto. Near the end of the moto, you had a little bit of company back there. Did you know that Tyler was bringing on the pressure? Yeah, I saw him, and uh, I think it's pretty fun to ride with him because it's been a while that I was waiting for him, and uh, I like Tyler, so I got to give it up for him, and. Uh, you know, I just was a uh, smooth control and uh, and I won the motor, so I'm really happy. I want to I want to say thanks to Kawasaki Monster Pro Circuit and uh, Tor, uh, Vance, uh, everybody on the team, every sponsor, and I want to uh, say a big thanks to uh, Traxxas. Congratulations, job well done. <laughs> Here's our uh, Geico moment of the race. Pretty simple. The 28 of Tyler Atre is into the record books, Jeff Emig, with an overall victory in the United States. Yeah, it doesn't get any more special than that. That's that's it. And here's uh, what he takes advantage of by winning the race. He's moved it to second in series standings. It's one, two, three for Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki. And as you can see, all hailing from different nations. Yeah, that's what was interesting is we had so many different riders from all over the world competing here in the US Championship. So let's go back down to the podium with Aaron. We're getting rained on down here. Blake Wharton is like, I've, I've sweated enough throughout the day. Blake, tell us about your day. It was a bit of a tough one for you. You had some positives and some negatives. Are you happy with the overall result of third? I'm happy with my overall, considering my first moto. I, you know, like you said, I didn't have the greatest moto. I crashed a couple times and it was muddy, but you know, I felt like I, I came back as good as I could for that race. Um, but the second moto was a lot better. I got out front a little quicker and then, you know, got me up here on the podium. But I want to thank God for keeping us safe and letting us all be here. I feel like really blessed. I want to. Uh, thank the Geico Power Sports Honda, Fox, Glenn, my mechanic, uh, Bo, my trainer, my family. Thank you very much. It started to sprinkle just a little bit, probably the last three laps of the race. Did that affect your ride whatsoever? I had to slow down a little bit because I felt it getting slick. I mean, it'd be easy to wipe out on the last lap and you feel like a spode, so I had to back it off a little bit. Great job. We'll see you again next weekend. Butts Creek. Feel your passion for racing with Speed Mobile. Get the latest motorcycle racing news and results as soon as they become available. Send right to your phone. Text MOTO to Speed 3 for Speed Motorcycle Racing text alerts. You know, when the series began, we were at Hangtown, and Jeff Emick said, we have to talk about this kid, Eli Tomac, beginning, and he won. In the beginning of this show, he said, I think the you know veterans are going to be strong. There will be a challenge from guys like Barsha. But the veterans end up on top again, Jeff. Yeah, the veterans are getting it done. There's no doubt about it. But we saw some incredible racing once again today. It's mixed up all the way through. Tickle rides up to a fifth. Canard a fourth. And Wharton a third in that final moto. There's some serious charging. Well, you got to stay with us all year long on speed for the 250 class coverage. Next week, Saturday, we'll be at Boats Creek, Maryland. It just keeps getting better and better. Can anyone stop this monster pro circuit army? We'll find out next week. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to log on to speed.com for more information on this series. Congratulations out to Tyler Rattray with his first ever win in the United States.